Inhaled insulin, known as a Frezza, is one of the most unique and effective tools we have to manage type 1 diabetes. It's been around for over a decade, but it has finally been recognized in the 2025 Standards of Care by the American Diabetes Association, which is a big step toward making people more aware of it. So today we're going to talk about the top five most critical tips you need to know about a Frezza, whether you're just starting it or you've been using it for years. I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. And we are taking control of your diabetes. All right, Steve, it's like Christmas Day, your birthday, you finally got your Frezza. Finally. You convinced your provider to prescribe it for you, you dealt with the pharmacy, you got it. So now what are the five things that you really need to know? So number one is kind of how it works and the speed of action, which is kind of why it's so novel and cool. So we all know that our quote unquote rapid acting insulins are terribly slow. They take 30 minutes to start working. They hang around for four or five hours. A Frezza is very different because it's inhaled into your lungs. So it gets right into your bloodstream, starts working almost immediately, and then is out of your system by about 90 minutes. So this real rapid on and kind of rapid off. And, and why is that important, Steve? It's so important because we want to keep our blood sugars after eating from bouncing up. And that's one of the biggest frustrations we have as type ones. The rapid off, I can't, even emphasize how important it is because it doesn't hang around. You don't have delayed low blood sugar and it gets around all the problems you just mentioned with subcutaneous insulin. Mm -hmm. The timing of inhalation, when should you take it? And before you answer that, we always tell patients taking injections to bolus 20, 30 minutes before they eat to allow the insulin time to start working. This is different, so when should people inhale it? Yeah, right when you start eating. You know, you and I push taking the sub-Q insulin 20 minutes before, and you and I forget probably as much as anybody else. And it works within 10 minutes, as you said, very quickly. And so the post-meal blood sugars are much better, and the time and range is better, and the amount of hypoglycemia is also reduced. Yeah, so you can take it right when you start eating or even a little bit after, which we would never tell somebody to do with kind of rapid acting insulin. So I know when to take it, you know, right when I'm starting to eat, but how do I dose it? And before we kind of get specifics, let's talk about these cartridges because this yeah. is what it looks like. So, you know, unlike rapid acting insulin, we dial up one, two, three, four units or whatever. It comes in these different cartridge sizes. The blue is four unit cartridges. The green is eight unit cartridges and the yellow is, you know, 12 units. So it kind of comes in these, these dose ranges. And, you know, we can show people real quick if you want. You got one. Yeah. This is a 12 unit cartridge. It's empty, right? I don't want you going low. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You pop it in. He didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm whoa, no. And you get it close to snapping it, but not quite. You put it in your mouth. You seal the device here and right, slight angle down, snap it in. That's it. Yeah, so very easy to use. Now, the most important thing when it comes to dosing, you're thinking, well, four units, that seems like a high, you know, like uh, the lowest dose is kind of high. So the conversion is actually like two to one, meaning that let's say eight units of a Frezza is more like four units of Humalog or Novolog. 12 units of Frezza is more like six units. So it's not one to one and you really need to know that because if you don't, you'll kind of underdose yourself. Yeah. So Steve, I've got my conversion down. I kind of know what I'm dealing with here. But the, literally the first time I try it, what should I do? Yeah, I, we, we both recommend this approach if, as a correction dose. So if your blood sugar is, let's just say, above 200, 220, maybe a trend arrow going straight across, take a four-unit cartridge and inhale it and see what happens. And you get an idea of the time course of action and if that dose was appropriate. So you'll learn that with a Frezza, a lot of it in the beginning is a little trial and error, mm -hmm. but that's the safest way to go. Yeah. And when you do that correction, you can see how much four units drops you and the speed, and you can get kind of familiar with that. And then as you get more kind of comfortable, then you could try it for meals and there's no real kind of wrong way to use it. Now, typically, you know, like, it's, we prescribe it for people that are using multiple daily injections. So they actually have 
a basal injection um, of whatever, Traceva, Atlantis, and then they can use this for meals and corrections. Um, and people say, well, how does this compare to like a hybrid closed loop system in terms of blood sugar control? They actually recently did this study called the Inhale 3 study, mm -hmm. where they essentially compared a Fresa use on basal insulin to one of these systems, and really the, the control was, was very equivalent. Yeah. So people can do very, very well um, on these, on a Fresa. Now, so what if somebody is already on a hybrid closed loop system, Steve? Can they use a Fresa with their pump? Yeah, it's not officially approved for that use. You and I and many other people experiment, and we seem that it do, we seem that it works pretty well. The algorithm of the system you're using sort of adapts over time, but once again, it's not an official recommendation. But you and I both are on hybrid closed loop systems, and we enjoy the benefits of a Fresa big yeah. time. You just said it saved your butt a couple times yesterday, yeah, literally. Yeah. So when patients hear about this, you know, inhaled insulin, like what's going to happen with my lungs? Uh, any monitoring I need to do? What are the side effects? Yeah, well, typically the most common side effect is uh, a dry cough when you first use it. And some people get a cough every single time. Sometimes drinking a little bit of water before and after is helpful. But I'd say most people have learned that if you can take it out of the fridge, that helps. You learn the inhalation process. For me, I don't do a real fast inhalation. That's my little trick. Uh, and that's the most common side effect. Now, if you have Severe asthma, if you're a current smoker, you should not be using a Fresa or anything yeah. else in your lungs. Well, let me just say about the cough is that it is common, but over the first month or so, it typically tends to go away. So even if you have it right away with the first inhalation, doesn't mean you're gonna have it forever. That's true. Yeah. Now, you were gonna talk about the lung function yeah, monitoring. Go for it. So, you know, basically what you need to get done is what they call an FEV1. It's how much volume of air you can force out in one second. It's one of these little guys, you literally just inhale into it, uh, blow into it, I guess, and it gives you a reading and essentially tells you if your lung function is normal or not. It's just to establish a baseline and then you're supposed to do it again after six months and then every year. Very simple. Do not let your doctor send you for full pulmonary function tests, yeah, which can take hours to do. This is something that every office should have and it literally takes one second. It's right there in the definition. Yeah, I mean, this, this Afreza has been available for a decade. The purpose of doing this FEV1 is to make sure you don't have any other lung disease mm -hmm. before starting it. And I think it's safe to say this doesn't cause lung disease, it doesn't cause lung cancer, anything like that. So yep. that's helpful to allay people's uh, fears. That's important. All right, so critical tip number five, which is the most fun because it is have fun with it. And what do we mean by that? Diabetes can't be fun, right? So Steve, what does that mean? It means that you can really experiment eating things you don't normally eat. We had a donut challenge and we ate three donuts in 20 minutes and we tried to stay in range over the ensuing two hours and we used everything from a Fresa to fast acting insulin subcutaneously to running up and down the steps. Yeah. And uh, I always I say I love acai bowls which are just like some of diabetes' worst nightmares. It's, it's fruit goop, I don't even know what it is, with granola and honey, just carbs, 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 carbs. Never would eat them, but something with the Frezza, guess what, you finally got a tool to fight back against these high carb meals. Not saying you eat it all the time, but it's nice to have something that can fight those high carb meals. Yeah, and, and you know, lastly, we've all been in the situation where your blood sugar is high, you give yourself a dose of sub-Q insulin to correct, nothing happens, you do another dose, another dose, and then you crash. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is the best way to bring down your blood sugar when it's high and not having to have that big crash later on. Yeah, well, I'm gonna keep an eye on Steve's blood sugars now that he inhaled 12 units of Fresno, make sure he doesn't go low. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you learned something about a Fresno. If you think it's appropriate for you, make sure to ask your, your provider about it and give it a shot. Or not a shot, an inhalation. <laughs> See you later.